like, it's flawed to claim that, like, well, people who are, say they're feminist, but are racist, but are, you know, classist, but are ableist, transphobic, all of these things, they're not real feminists. Like, a real feminist wouldn't feel that way, but I think that that is a very, um, I think that's a really, like, a way of, like, avoiding the issue. Um, it's hard to critique a movement from within a movement sometimes. And there's a lot of talk, right? There's so much talk about, like, trans people and their genitalia. Mm. So I just want to, like, bust some bubbles and let you know that no, I don't have a dick. No, I never have a dick. No, I will never have a dick. Right? You put up a fancy dollar sign, right? <laughs> I think the feminism that I knew was not necessarily a feminism that talked about trans people, um, even though it didn't exclude them exactly. So my relationship with feminism, I guess, is, you know, ever-evolving. I think it's really interesting, like, like we talk about feminism and like this relationship to it, and what I find as a trans woman is that often you have like cis women who are like, well, why should we give up our positionality for trans women? Do you know what I mean? It's like this like uh, focus on the biological aspects of like being a woman as opposed to like, like more generally what the systems are. When you say the word women, you aren't always talking about all women. For a while, when people talked about feminism, they were talking about white feminism for a very long while and even still today when people talk about feminism they're talking about cis feminism or you know gender exclusive feminism and now i'm saying the word feminism and i'm like what should i say instead gender justice gender affirmation I started to kind of distance myself from feminism when i started to kind of distance myself from like gender in general. Uh, you know, even the word feminism has the word feminine in it, and I don't identify as feminine, um, which, you know, is fine, but also, like, I'm a person who's affected by gender inequality. The problem with feminism is not a problem with feminism, it's a problem with liberals. Um, it's a problem with capitalism. It's not, um, it's not going to be effective under capitalism. I think that that is a conclusion I reached over time. It's not something I was born knowing. I don't fault people for not being at that step. Is equality the operative word here or is equity the operative word here? And what does equity look like in an environment where capitalism still exists? Um, and I realize that that's not possible. And this is a problem, I think, with like identity politics as a whole. Um, with, even within a marginalized identity, there are still hierarchies. Um, and without acknowledging those even um a lot of harm can be done like a lot of like first wave feminist people like you know susan b anthony were incredibly racist who they did not view black women to be their equal and you know what am i supposed to think when i am a very proud product of the efforts and work and labor and pain of so many black women when if a movement isn't going to speak for them then how could it also speak for me basically capitalism creates conditions that necessitate exploitation so 
it's it's an inherent hierarchy with those who have capital at the top and those who perform and produce labor at the bottom and those who perform and produce labor are often women racialized women um disabled women like people who are not at the top of social hierarchies they like you notice that people who have the most social power also tend to be people who own capital those two things aren't you know different the thing is going about changing like social hierarchies ultimately the material results are the same because the economic hierarchies aren't also being like dealt with so basically i'm trying to like like being a man in and of itself is an economic position um class features in heavily into what is considered an ideal man and an ideal woman. Your experiences as a woman, as a man, as a non-binary person are inherently going to be affected by your class. It's not surprising that, like, for example, growing up, many of the people who would say, well, we don't need feminism anymore, were people in higher economic positions. And at the same time, why many of the people who say, actually, I don't really have time for feminism because it's not really, like, addressing my concern are those in lower economic positions. So that's why class has, analysis has to be not just incorporated, it has to be kind of like the basis of anything a social movement is doing because the material conditions, like the real stuff, the things you can touch and hold and see, the things that are actually impacting how you live your day-to-day -day life are structural, they're systemic, and they're economic. Um, and so that's why um, I think that identity politics in general, it's not that they're not important. They're useful. Um, they're, it's worth understanding. Um, I think a lot of the time people who, for example, will be like, oh, well, identity politics says that I, a white person or whatever, can't approach a black person about something that they're doing that's like wrong or harmful or whatever because of the racial power dynamic at play but usually what that means is like i still don't trust black people or i still don't whatever um i think that is indicative of bias that still exists rather than a problem with like identity in and of itself in all honesty the enemy of like cis women is not trans women it is not gender queer people it's misogyny right misogyny and sexism as a system which like relegates certain bodies to certain tasks i mean i don't call myself a feminist with a capital f anymore um do i believe in feminist ideals yes do i believe in feminist goals absolutely um do I think I would personally materially benefit from, like, feminist theory being applied in more spaces? Yeah, absolutely. What is misogyny in this country but a byproduct of colonialism? Saying all this to say that, like, the way, the way forward for feminism, the way to be intersectional in our feminism is not to, like, try to bring in people for, like, the cis, like, imagining of, like, the principle, but to target and attack and dismantle colonialism. If we're actually going to accomplish equity for all people, we need to kind of get over the idea that, like, a hierarchy with a woman at the top would be better than a hierarchy with a man at the top. The problem isn't who's in charge, the problem is that someone, a one individual, is in charge in the first place. Um, so those things are all like they're all interconnected it's not that one is more important than the other it's that depending on the angle you approach things at it's more effective